Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy midweek. Can we all stand as we begin? Let us bow our heads for prayer. Our Father and our God, we just pause to give you thanks, to give you praise, to honor you just for who you are. Thank you for the blessing of the day as we begin our service. We ask you to come and tabernacle with us. Forgive us, dear Father, for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Be the remainder of the service, dear Father, and may at the end of it all you get all the glory and all of the honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You ever had a feeling where you needed Jesus to hold your hand? Anybody ever needed Jesus to hold their hand? The song says, as I travel through this pilgrim land, Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Now you all know I need your help, right? So we got a big choir tonight.
Hold my hand. Listen. You ever had one of them days? You know, one of them days. Them days. It's only one of them days. That same one. Yeah. I had one of them today. But God. Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning. We shall see. Oh yeah, we oh we we having a good time tonight in the Lord. I'm sorry. We're gonna have a good time in the Lord tonight. Some glad morning.
pray. Loving Heavenly Father, when we woke up this morning, you promised us protection. You promised us that you will bring us to this wilderness church. We have left the city behind, and here we are in your sanctuary. Father, there are those of us who are in the valley of decision. We want to serve you, but something is holding us back. Help us to make that decision this evening, Father, as our pastor comes and we present the word of God forcibly so that we can all be ready to go with you when you come the second time. In Jesus' name, and all the people say, You may be seated, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Come on, come on. You could do much better than that. Let's warm up. Good evening, everybody. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, say praise the Lord. And if you're happy and you know that you're on your way to heaven, let me hear you say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Did you have a good day? Yes. Was God good to you today? Yes. Well, he was extremely good to me today. And I am glad to be in on top of the world. I am glad to be alive and not below. And so I just want to greet you this evening in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ. I want you to turn to your neighbor, to your left and to your right, and to welcome them. Say that I am glad with a big smile that you're here tonight. Is that all right? Ah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. I am glad that you're here tonight. Amen, 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 amen. We want to let you know that we're excited that you're here tonight. Tonight is Wednesday evening, and we are just simply delighted that you chose to be with us here at the Jesus is the Answer Gospel Series. Uh, night after night, God has been using his manservant, Evangelist Stephen Gates, and God has been doing a mighty work through him. I am going to ask you to return here on Friday evening. To return when? Friday evening, and not to come by yourself. But I am expecting you to come with a visitor. Is that all right? We want to encourage you to come with a family member, a co-worker, a neighbor, a friend. Bring someone along with you. Because when you bring them, you are saying that I am so excited about what's happening here that I can't help but invite somebody else. And I don't want you to think that I have forgotten our online visitors. Because we have a whole lot of individuals who are watching via YouTube. We have had over 400 persons, devices connected, and even today someone called me and said, I am watching every single night, but I'm not signed in, but I'm watching every night. So I want you and the audience to help me welcome those who are watching via YouTube. So I want to give them a shout out tonight. Let's just wave and say hello. Hello. Ah, they can see you, they can see you, and we're happy that they are here tonight. So we want to thank you for joining us this evening. There are a couple of things I want to share with you as we continue in our meeting this evening. First of all, we want you to know that prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. Every single evening, we are praying. Every day, we are praying. In fact, every morning, we are praying. I will tell you that every morning we pray for these meetings because we know that what we can't do, God can do. And in the back tent here, you would notice that there is a group of people who are consistently throughout these meetings praying for you. They are praying for your concerns. They are praying for your needs. And we're going to ask you to continue to uh, support them as they pray. We want you to lift up their hands as they pray for you. Is that all right? And so if you have a concern, if you have a need, if you desire someone to pray with and for you, please go and see in the back tent, there are persons who are willing to pray for you. Also, we have a prayer line, and our prayer line number is 603-1525. That's 603-1525. We are encouraging you to call that number, and somebody is waiting to pray with and for you. Also, we want you to know that we are registering persons every single night. We are thankful for those who have already registered. And we're asking all of you, 
to please register night after night, members and visitors as you come in the tent, because we want you to be a part of what the Lord is doing, and we want to get to know you a little better as we seek to reach out to you to help meet your needs as we seek the Lord night after night. We also want you to know that as we are here, once again, parents, we are encouraging you to please kindly look out for your little children. Look out for your little ones because we want them to be what? Safe. We want them to be safe. And so we're asking you night after night to ensure that your little darlings are taken care of. Don't allow them to go out of your sight. Is that all right? I will tell you that there's some stuff that is happening sometimes, but I can't tell you over the PA system. But we want you to be careful, please. Take care of your little ones and secure them like they are jewels that they are. Is that all right? And then we want you to understand that as we do this, if you want water, water is to the, my right, and you will also find the restrooms uh, to my left, that yellow building. Finally, I want to say to you that this weekend, something special is going to be happening here around this area. And so we want all of you who will come this weekend, beginning tomorrow, to please park on this side. When you come through this road, you park on this side. Don't park over that side because there is an agro um, expo that is going on that weekend, the weekend here. And so we don't want to interfere with what they are doing. They're going to be going until 10 p.m. in the night. So we're asking you to not to park on that side uh, because something special will be happening over there and we, want, we do not want to interfere with them. And then we want you to know that that's going to be on Friday evening and on Sabbath. And so we are asking you to stay on this side of the road. Is that all right? Is, is that un that's understood? And finally, this coming weekend, is our first Sabbath celebration. And you don't want to miss it. All roads will lead right here underneath this great tent for our meeting. And we are looking forward to what the Lord will do. We will start at 9 a.m. sharp. And we're looking for what the Lord will do. And by 12 p.m., by God's grace, we're going to be finished. Is that all right? And so we're looking forward to what the Lord will do. Come out, get a blessing. Invite somebody and may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, I'm going to ask you to help me welcome a sweet singer in Zion, Sister Leante Lloyd, as she blesses our hearts. Good evening, everyone. to follow him, drawn by what he promised them. If they could sell all that they had, he said that God would send 
his quiet way, giving himself away. Come on, y'all can clap with me now. Yes, you just shake off those heavy bands. And what you do? Lift up those holy hands. Hey, hey, now, while you got those hands up, keep them up. I want you to reach inside your pockets now because it's offering time. I just please come forward. Praise the Lord. And what are we gonna do? Lift up those hands. Okay, okay, let's get it. 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 We're gonna pray for the offering now. Ain't God good? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for this opportunity that we have to give back to your kingdom. Continue to bless our efforts as we await the return of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen.
song stand for our theme song. I've got my mind made up. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. How many of us, thank you so much, sir. How many of us got our minds made up? How many of us have our minds made up? How many of us are not going to turn back? How many of us are going to see Jesus one day? Look at your neighbor and say, one day. Look at your neighbor and say, one day. One day, one day, one day. Give God some praise on tonight, if you will. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is good to see every face in the place on tonight. It is good that the Lord has blessed us to see this day and to be here, and we are mighty grateful. Blessings upon every person up underneath this tent, those who are in their cars, those who are watching online. We thank God for your presence tonight. Amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise tonight. Amen. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated. Bless the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the matchless name of our Savior is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive tonight. Amen. I'm glad to be alive tonight. What about you tonight? Are you glad to be alive tonight? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Quickly, we want to 
say good evening once again to everybody. And I pray that you've had a good day today. I thank God for his mercy and his kindness towards us because it's of the Lord's mercies uh, that we are not consumed. Uh, because his compassions towards us do not fail. Uh, they are new every morning. Amen. I pray, I pray that you had a good character building experience day today. Amen. How many of you had a character building experience today? All right, all right, all right. That means that the Lord used some situations to work on your character. Whether it may be a boss, whether teacher, it may be some children, students that you are teaching. Huh? But God used whatever means to work and develop your character. And we thank God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Quickly tonight, my brothers and sisters, I want to just first of all, uh, express my appreciation once again to your conference administration, your president. Amen. Let's put our hands together for your president. Amen. Praise God as well as his administrative team, Pastor Raming, as well as your illustrious treasurer departmental staff and team, as well as the pastors in this great field. Amen. We praise God for them. We thank God for the churches in this field. Come on, say amen. Put your hands together. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We praise God for what he is doing in this part of his vineyard. Now, quickly tonight, because we got a long journey uh, to go on tonight and a short time to get there, but I got a gift for somebody tonight. Someone tonight, I got a gift for you, and I want to give it tonight. I got one card, one card. Uh, we're going to give out a little bit more on Friday night, but for tonight, we just have one card. And I want to bless somebody tonight, and I hope I don't get myself in a hole uh, by this category that I'm about to share with you. But I want to bless somebody whose name is Betty tonight. Amen. Uh, your name is Betty tonight. Betty, any, do we have any Bettys in the house tonight? All right, all right, all right, all right. We have a Betty, Betty. We have a sister Betty in the house tonight. All right, so. Oh, we have, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my dear sister. All right, could, could I get some help if you don't mind? If, if someone could bring this card. Thank you so much, my dear friend. Thank you so much. Let's put our hands together for my dear friend. Now, did we have, did we have some? All right, so this is what I'm going to do. Forgive me, please. We only had one card, but I'm, 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 I'm going to be a man of my word, amen? And we're going to make sure that we're going to bless you on Friday night. So the one, the, the dear friend that was Betty over here, all right, we're going to make sure we get you, my friend, on Friday night, amen? Let's put our hands together, amen? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, quickly, my brothers and sisters, we are... Uh, taking a shift here in our gospel series. We're going to do, as I mentioned on last night, some teaching preaching. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So we're going to ask that you would be in interactive uh, throughout this uh, sermonic teaching discourse on tonight and even as we move forward. There will be some times where I will refer you to the screens. There you have a screen on this side. You also have a screen on that side, amen? And so um, we're going to have various texts up there that we're going to ask that you would help us out with so we can make sure that you're still there with us. Is that all right? Amen, amen, amen. But I want to ask that you would please uh, bow your heads with me as we talk to God in prayer tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful and we're thankful, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. We're thankful on tonight, dear Master, that you have looked beyond our many faults and you have granted us grace. And so, Father, we are appreciative, eternally appreciative. And so, Lord, now we have come into this sacred space for such a time as this to hear a word from the Lord. Master, we pray that you would please unclog our ears that we would be able to hear the word of God tonight, that you would steal every distracting thought and center our thoughts upon what you are conveying tonight. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, please be exalted tonight, Lord, and we pray that as a result of you being exalted, dear Master, that you would please place the preacher behind the cross, 
Nobody needs to see me, but they do need to see, hear, experience Jesus. And Master, you've promised that if you be lifted up from the earth, that you will draw, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, that when the call is made tonight, that you will draw individuals from every corner of this tent, on the perimeter of this tent, and even online. Master, please have thine own way tonight. I lean upon you for strength, for vigor, for clarity of thought, and the words that need to be said. We thank you, Father. Now, Father, be so exalted in this tent that every demonic force that may be in here, that, Father God, it would pack its bags and leave. We thank you, Master, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. Come on, say amen again. Give him some praise for what he's about to share with you. Our message, my friends, on tonight is it's about to go down. It's about to go down. I, I want you to look at your neighbor if you can help me tonight. I didn't do that. But if you can look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's about to go down. Ah, uh, that, that, that was a cocky neighbor. Look at another neighbor, amen? Even if that was the same neighbor, say neighbor. It's about to go down. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's about to go down. My brothers and my sisters, this is a saying or expression uh, that we typically use in the United States when something is about to happen. When you hear this statement, it's about to go down, it means that something evidently is about to happen. It's about to jump off. It's happening right now. This saying, my friends, expresses that a particular event is about to take place and you better be ready for it. The urgency of the statement, my friends, lets you know you don't want to miss what is about to transpire because it's about to go down. Stay with me here. This statement, my friends, is a general statement. It embraces any happening or event in life that a person considers as important. For example, my brothers and sisters, someone would say there's a party going on. It's about to go down. I'm about to get paid. I got some dead folk in here. Come on, say amen. All these rich folk in here. Come on, say amen. I'm about to get paid. It's about to go down. Come on, say amen. There's a fight that's about to break out. It's about to go down. So-and-so is getting married. It's about to go down. I'm about to go off. It's about to go down. Any happening or event that's about to take place that we deem as significant or important, we label it with this saying, it's about to go down. However, my brothers and sisters, and I want you to follow me here tonight, the Bible tells us that there is something that is about to happen, something that is about to take place, something that is about to go down that we will not miss. This cataclysmic event is better than a party. Uh, it's better than seeing a fight. It's better than going to a wedding. And the Bible, my brothers and sisters, informs us that this is an event that every man, woman, boy, or girl must prepare for because it's about to go down. My brothers and my sisters, this event is about to happen. No individual can run away from this event. No individual can postpone this event because it's about to go down. But before it takes place, Jesus informs us in Matthew 24 of some happenings that will precede its arrival. I want you to notice, friends of mine, there are some questions that you and I may have. Have you ever asked yourself the question? Why is our world so crazy? Anybody ever asked that question before? Uh, why, 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 why is my spouse so crazy? Huh? Come on, say amen. Why are the children that I love so crazy? Come on, say amen. 
Why is that church sister that quote Ellen White all the time so crazy? Come on, say amen. Why are the folk driving are on the road so crazy? Have you ever asked a question, why is our world so crazy? Why are politicians so crooked? They would get up behind the desk and they would utter certain things that they're going to do, but when they get in office, they do whatever they want to do with your tax dollars. Why are politicians so crooked? Why are neighborhoods so violent? Come on, say amen. Over the hill violent, and, and um, 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 a Grant's town may be violent, and Hillview may be violent. Why are neighborhoods so violent? Have you ever asked the question, why are children so disobedient? Ah. Ah, have you also lastly asked the question, why is there so much sickness in the world? Cancer, COVID, uh, uh, monkeypox, and, and all types of sicknesses because brothers and sisters, it's about to go down. Ah, uh, but friends of mine, C.S. Lewis, just stay with me here. C.S. Lewis, that noted Christian writer and author, made a very profound statement in one of his writings. He stated that God whispers in our pleasures. When we're having a good time and when we have all the money that we want and we have all the friends that we want on Facebook and Instagram, he says God whispers to us in our pleasures but and speaks to us in our consciences but shouts to us in our pains. Friends of mine, when we are going through pain in our lives. It is not the time that God has abandoned us, but my brothers and sisters, it is, it is a time when God is talking to us. God is shouting. Come on, say amen. Uh, he says it is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Come on, say amen. God, it is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. But friends of mine, my question on tonight, just follow me here. Did the Bible predict pain that the world is experiencing. I want to share something with you tonight because I want to let you know that the Bible friends of mine did predict the pain that you and I are going, that you and I are going through. The, the Bible friends of mine is a divine forecast. We've got a divine meteorologist. Come on, say amen. See, where I stay at in Florida, we cannot trust the meteorologist. Come on, say amen. We may get up one morning and the meteorologist may say that it's not going to rain, but when we get out in the day, we realize that the meteorologist did not know what he was talking about. But my brothers and sisters, we don't have to worry about that when it comes to the word of God. I wish I had some preaching help in this house on tonight. We can trust in the word of God. We can believe on the word of God. Is there anybody that's thankful that God's got a sure word? The Bible lets us know in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 it says, and so we do have a what kind of word? A what kind of word? A sure word of prophecy, which you would do well to heed as light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. I want to thank God on tonight that the word of God is sure. My health may not be sure. People in my life may not be sure. But I want to declare to you tonight that the word of God is sure. The Bible lets us know in our Isaiah 40 verse 8, it says the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 89, it says forever, 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 O oh Lord, thy word is fixed in the heavens. I want to thank God tonight that his word is sure. God's word is sure. And God, before we traverse through this pain in this life that you and I are dealing with, God gave you and I the forecast. I wish I had some help in here tonight. God said that there are going to be some divine red flags to indicate to you and I that it's about to go down. I wish I had some help in here. 
Now, friends of mine, you know about red flags. Whenever I counsel a couple that comes to me and they sit down in my office, I ask them what red flags did they see in their partner? Because a red flag will give you the trajectory of your relationship. Come on, say amen. Because some of us ignore red flags. I wish I had some help in there because we expect God to turn it around. But red flags let you know what's going to happen. Is there anybody that's thankful on tonight that God did not leave you and I clueless? But God gave us some red flags to let you and I know that something is about to go down. So what's the first red flag? Aren't you thankful for red flags? I said, aren't you thankful for red flags? The first red flag that heaven shares with us, that something, Pastor Rami, is about to go down. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7, it says that it's going to be some political chaos <laughs> that indicates that something is about to go down. Uh, Jesus said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not fearful, that you don't lose your mind because Jesus said such things must take place, must take place. They will talk about you like a dog. It must take place. They will lie on you. It must take place. The Bible says that such things must take place, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. It's about to go down. Bible lets us know in the words of John, the revelator on the Isle of Patmos, that something is about to go down. He says in Revelation 6 verse 4, are you there with me? I said, are you there with me? The Bible lets us know in Revelation 6 verse 4, another horse, fiery, red, went out. And look what John says, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And the Bible says, and that people should kill one another. I don't know about you, beloved brothers and sisters, but in this beautiful island of Bahamas, the red horse is galloping through here. I wish I had some help up in here right now. The red horse is galloping through sexual assaults and rapes. The red horse is galloping through domestic violence. The red horse is galloping through robbery. There's a red horse in our Land. It's about to go down. The Bible talks about political chaos. We see in that beautiful country of Haiti that there's political mayhem. Are y'all still with me tonight? We see that the original government has been ousted by a gang leader known as Barbecue, whoever thought that some gang bangers could lead a country, but it's an indication that something is about to go down. I wish I had some help in here tonight. Oh, but not only do we have political chaos in Haiti, we've got deadly domestic violence in Bahamas. I wish I had some help in here. One of the leading causes of death in this island is domestic violence in the homes of this land, but it's an indication that it's about to go down. Deadly domestic violence. Husbands laying their hands on their wives. Wives laying their hands on their husbands. Let me tell you something. Can I stop here and give you something for free? If you got to put your hands on them, you don't need to be with them. No, no, I'm dead here tonight. Come on, say amen. Matter of fact, if they've got to put their hands on you, don't let them do it the second time. Are y'all with me over here? Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. Let me tell you something here. You may fool me once, but you're not going to fool me twice. Come on, say amen. And if he did it or she did it before, they'll do it again. Come on, say amen. Because it shows a lack of, some, a, a, a severe lack of disrespect. It's a lack of respect. Deadly domestic violence in this great, beautiful island and country. But then we got political violence. 
in the U.S. of A. Come on, say amen. The land of the free and the home of the brave. I wish I had some help in here. Come on, say amen. <laughs> we've got the blue aisle and we've got the red aisle. We've got Joe Biden. And y'all there with me? Come on, say amen. We got old crazy Donald Trump. Come on, say amen. And I one that says, I'm going to make America great again. And he took America to the gutter. We've got political chaos in the United States of America. But it's an indication that it's about to go down. But also, not only do we have political chaos, just stay with me here. We also have natural chaos. Let the church say natural chaos. Ah, uh, this, this, this picture here, friends of mine, is a startling picture. It is a picture, friends of mine, of Maui, Hawaii. Last year, if you can recall, there was a fire that went through this beautiful place. The top picture right there is a picture of what it was before. But five minutes after, the bottom picture is an indication of what it was after. I wish I had some help in here. It lets me know that life can change on you. It lets me know, friends of mine, that that, that, that fire can do it in a level anything. Come on, say amen. It rem it's, it's reminiscent of when Jesus comes back again. Every, every fruitful land that looks nice is going to burn up. I wish I had some help in here. Your car is going to burn up. Your wig is going to burn up. Your Louis Vuitton is going to burn up. Your money is going to burn up. Your house is going to burn up. It's about to go down. Natural chaos. Political chaos. Look at what the Bible says. I'm in the text here. The Bible says in Matthew 24, verses 7 and 8, it says that there will be famines. Huh? Pestilences. COVID-19, monkeypox, HIV, AIDS, all this other stuff, and earthquakes in various places. That means, friends of mine, they had an earthquake in New York and New Jersey and Connecticut last week. I wish I had some help in here. The Bible says, listen here, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Ah, Dr. Valentino, it says all these are the beginning of sorrows. I like that, friends of mine, because what Jesus is simply telling you and I, it's like a woman that has birth contractions. When that woman feels that pain in the midnight hour, it's not an indication that she's about to deliver that child, but it's an indication that she's close, but she's got to go through some pain. I wish I had some help in here. And what Jesus is saying, we are close, but we got to go through some pain. We got to go through some Heartache. We've got to go through some trials. We've got to go through some, some difficulty because it's about to go down. Luke 21 verse 11 says, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Natural chaos. Look at what happened in Florida almost two years ago. Hurricane Ian came to Fort Myers, the west coast of Florida, and it took it down. Natural chaos. It's about to go down. But then, friends of mine, in the year 2020, in the United States of America, we, we, we were caught between a rock and a hard place. We know that we did not want Donald Duck. Come on, say amen. We didn't want Donald the Duck. Come on, say amen. We wanted him to pack his bags and go back to the Trump Tower. Come on, say amen. So we were caught between a rock and a hard place. Do we want Grandpa Joe? Or do we want great crazy Donald Trump? And many folk friends of mine, they, their, their vote was pending on the global climate warming Ah, many people were encouraged to vote for the climate because they said that we have destroyed the atmosphere with pollutions and toxics. Ah, and so many people went to the polls and they voted for Joe Biden. I'm a Democrat. Come on, say amen. Which means I voted for him. Come on, say amen. I don't agree with everything that my party uh, uh, upholds, but I did vote. Come on, say amen. Ah, but they, but they made a sign. There is no planet B. Ah, uh, how many of y'all know that, 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 that that sign speaks volumes? There is no planet B. Come on, say amen. But I will declare if we hold on to Jesus, Jesus said, I will make all things new. Is there anybody that's looking for that planet? I said, is there anybody that's looking for that planet? Is there anybody that's looking for that planet? Well, there 
will be no more sorrow, when there will be no more death, when there will be no more taxes, when there will be no more gangbangers, when there will be no more drug dealers. Is there anybody that's looking for that planet? It's about to go down. Natural chaos. Natural chaos, but also friends of mine, it's not only natural chaos. Are y'all still with me there? Political chaos, but also religious chaos. Let the church say religious chaos. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 24, verses 23 to 24. The Bible says, then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. Huh? For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. And listen to what Jesus said. He said that even possible, if possible, even the elect, even the good old church folk, even those of us who are spiritually grounded. Come on, say amen. But look what the Bible says. Jesus says, see, I have told you beforehand. Now, friends of mine, I want you to take a note there because it says miracles by themselves. See, many of us, we like entertainment. We come to church because we want to be entertained. I didn't feel that sermon tonight. You need to feel stuff all the time. Come on, say amen. We want to be entertained. And if, we don't, if we're not entertained, we'll boycott. Come on, say amen. But miracles by themselves do not prove that something is of God. I want you to just follow me here. Look what the text says. Matthew 7, verses 21 and 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Carry the Bible to church. So sanctimonious. Condemn everybody in the church. Because they're not on your level of spirituality. Come on, say amen. Talk about the young people instead of encouraging the young people. I know you don't do it here in this island, but maybe back over in the States where I'm at. Come on, say amen. He says, not, not, not all everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who what? But he who what? But he who what? Does the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus says you've got to obey him. Jesus says you've got to follow him. If you're going to make it to glory. Come on, say amen. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we, have we not prophesied in your name? We stood up and we waxed eloquently in church. We, we stood up and pontificated. Isn't it interesting how, how church folks stand up and wax eloquently in Sabbath school? Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. Prophesying in your name. Cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. He says, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Now, my brothers and my sisters, that is a striking statement. Just, just, just reason with me here. Have you ever dated somebody and... You saw him out in public 20 years after you dated him. You gained some pounds, they gained some pounds. You lost some hair, they, get, they regained their hair. Come on, say amen. And, 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 and they acted when they saw you as if they didn't know you. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. They, they, they acted as if they did not have a previous connection with you. Jesus said, when I come back, he said, for those who are playing church, he said, I'm going to look at him and say, there was never a connection. There was never no intimacy. There was never no, I wish I had some help in there. Jesus is saying, I'm going to say, I never knew you. And my brothers and sisters, when Jesus comes back, I don't know about you, but I want Jesus to claim it. Come on, say Amen. I want Jesus to say, that's my boy. I want Jesus to say, that's my servant. I want Jesus to say, that's my child. But not only is there religious, y'all well, with me, I'm almost through here. Religious conflict. And um, um, also political chaos. Also natural chaos. But also, pastor, there is interpersonal chaos. Now, now, I know y'all holy, y'all ain't never watched nothing outside of CNN and Hope Channel and, and 3ABN, but, 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 but when you're Sunday night and you're flipping, before you get to Hope Channel and 3ABN and CNN and CBN, maybe, maybe on Bravo, uh, you stumbled upon these five Georgia peaches. Not a dead house up in here today, amen? Come on, say Amen. These, these nice looking Georgia peaches. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. 
nice Nubian queens. And so, so if, you've ever, if you've ever stumbled upon these nice women who are rich, some educated, but it lets you know, friends of mine, you can be rich and educated and have no character and have no class. I wish I had some help in here today. I'd rather have some character and class and get the looks laid on. Come on, say amen. Because let me tell you something here. There are a whole lot of people that's pretty ugly. Come on, say amen. They look good on the outside, but they're smugly ugly on the inside. And my brothers and sisters, if you see these Georgia peaches on Sunday night, they are sitting at the dinner table taking off their shoes, throwing it at one another. They're taking off their wedding rings and throwing and cursing at one another. Interpersonal conflict, interpersonal drama, even on television. Come on, say amen. These are not the Andy Griffin days no more. Come on, say amen. Ah, it's about to go down. But not only that, friends of mine, I, I, I can see um, 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 conflict in the neighborhood. I, I can see conflict naturally, Elder. Say with me here. I, I, I can see conflict politically. But what really gets me, my dear sister, is conflict in the church. See, these folk over here, I, I don't even know if you're with me. Over, Come on, say amen. Uh, you know, you know what, 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 what I, I expect it everywhere else, but I don't expect it in the church. I don't expect when I come in, I got to put up some dukes. Come on, say amen. I got to fight you because you're so mean and you didn't pray. Come on, say amen. But the Bible lets us know that there will not only be outside conflict, but there's going to be conflict in the house of Zion. Church folk, instead of praying, they want to fight. They want to politic. They want to talk about everybody. They want to lie on everybody. I wish I had some help in here. The Bible says says that there will be conflict in the house of God. Ah, oh, but not only church conflict, stay with me here, marital conflict. Lord God have mercy. I wish I was preaching. I'm going to preach the lights up in here. Amen. Ah, uh, not only church conflict, but marital conflict. Come on, say amen. Some of the, uh, in all, all of us, we have drama in our homes. Come on, say amen. Some of us, we got more intense drama. When you get in the bed with your spouse, you don't even want to look over at them because you're scared. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. You don't want to spark an argument. Come on, say amen. You don't want to knock, you don't, you don't want her to knock you out. Come on, say amen. Marital conflict. Not only. But friends of mine, I'm so thankful on tonight that even though there is interpersonal chaos that the Bible lets you and I know. It says, and then many will be offended. And the Bible says, we'll betray one another. You know, friends of mine, that's the reason why I don't trust no church folk. Come on, say amen. I'd rather trust the brother on the street that can look me in the eye and be real rather than some old fake church people. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The Lord loves you and so do I. Come on, say amen. The Bible says, and many will betray one another. If your neighbor look at me, just say, let's wake up. Come on, say amen. It says, and hate one another. Folk hold on to a grudge. Whole animals in their soul. Come on, say amen. Want God to forgive them, but you don't want to forgive nobody else. Come on, say amen. Interpersonal. And it says, and look at this, and because lawlessness, that word lawlessness is iniquity. See, the reason why we betray one another and talk about one another like a dirty dog and still act like we're so spiritual and holy and sanctified. Come on, say amen. Because the Bible says iniquity is abounding in us. And the Bible says, and because iniquity will abound the love, the compassion, the forgiveness, the patience, the mercy of others will grow cold. It's about to go down. Catch this. Look, look, look what the Bible says as far as interpersonal chaos. Because Paul lets us know that in the last days in this text in 2 Timothy 3, that the devil, yes, he will use various mediums to derail us but the devil is going to use people to spiritually derail us look at what the bible says in second timothy chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 follow me here paul says but know this that in the last days 
perilous, difficult, hard times will come. You're wondering why you're going through some rough times now because you're in the last days. You wonder why you can't trust nobody because you're in the last days. You wonder why you gave all your, all your heart and money to your family, but yet they don't love you because you're in the last days. The Bible says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. He says, for there will be men that are lovers of themselves, selfish and narcissistic, got the Donald Trump syndrome. Come on, say amen. Only think about themselves. Do you want to know the reason why marriages suffer? It's not because you don't have enough money. It's not because you have, don't have the, the ability to communicate. It's because we're selfish. Come on, say amen. You know the reason why we fight in church? Because we don't get our way. It's because we're selfish. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves. Narcissistic. Come to church is all about you. Narcissistic. Come on, say amen. Want Jesus to do everything for you, but you don't want to sacrifice. Lovers of them. Why don't, why don't y'all say amen up in here? Come on, say amen. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, do anything for a dollar. Come on, say amen. Go down to the casino. Play the lottery. Come on, say amen. Lovers of money. It says, but then boasters, always talking about themselves. Always a self-referencer. Come on, say amen. You know anybody like that tonight? Come on, say amen. Proud, proud. Can't talk to them when you got a problem because they so bullheaded. Somebody's married to somebody like that. Come on, say amen. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Are y'all still there with me tonight? Now, let me stop there. Let me stop there. And I'm going to get off task for a second. I don't like no disrespectful rude children. I grew up old school. Where if you got out of hand, my folk got out of hand right along with you. Come on, say amen. You didn't act like you were grown because you're not grown. You're a child. Come on, say amen. And stay in a child's place. Come on. But you know what? You know what? The reason why some of these children are so honoring because it comes from the tree. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. Come on, say amen. We need to teach our children how to say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. Come on, say amen. We need to teach our sons how to open up the door for women. Y'all don't like my sermon, but I like it. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. But see, I learned the reason why, so I'm, I'm going to say this again, why the reason why some of our children are rude, because we're rude. We don't speak to nobody. We're nasty in our attitude. Come on, say amen. How you expect them to do good and you ain't doing, you ain't modeling it. Disobedient to parents. Teacher, try to teach your child. They spend more in disciplining them, time, than teaching them. And you got the nerves to go up to the school and act a fool. You need to act a fool on your child. Let me move on for y'all. Throw me out this alley. Y'all already mad at me anyway, amen? <laughs> Disobedient to parents. I'm just a straight shooter. Forgive me, amen? Unthankful. Come on, say amen. You do something for somebody and they think they deserve it. They're entitled. Let me tell you some parents. Teach your children how to say thank you. You say thank you. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Unthankful. But then look at it. We're going to have some unholy folk. You know, you got folk nowadays. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody that would sit up in church on their phone. All on Facebook. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. But they would not go into the court of law with that phone while the judge is talking to them. Let me tell you something here. If you won't do that in the court of law, why in the world would you come in God's presence and treat him like an old shoe? We're so erudite now. We're so spiritually educated now. Nobody can do Unholy. Talk about preachers like a dirty dog. Unholy. Come on, say amen. <laughs> unloving, unloving, unforgiving. Hold on to grudges 
until you die. Come on, say amen. Slander us. Gossip and talk dirty about anybody without self-control. Go off on somebody and you talk about their mama all the way to their daddy, all the way up to their great-great-grandfather. You don't know nothing about it. Come on, say amen. Huh? Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure. One who sit home and watch TV but don't want to come to church for an hour. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. Would get so enthusiastic and junk anew. Come on, say, uh huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Junk anew. Uh, get, get, get so enthusiastic and junk anew, twirling yourself. But when it comes to God, you don't have time for God. Love us a pleasure. Says so having a form of godliness. Look holy. Look righteous. Look like you're endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. But if God cracked you open right now, you deny the Holy Ghost power thereof. The Bible says, and from such turn away. The Bible says, if you know anybody like that, that you're hanging out with, you need to say, see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Come on, say amen. Because you're defined by the company that you keep. The Bible says, in these last days, you cannot hang out with everybody. From such turn away. I got to move on here. I always let my church folk know that you are who you hang out with, as I stated before. You can't hang out with a gossiper and not gossip. You can't lie down with a dog and don't come up with fleas. Come on, say amen. There's some folk you need to cut out of your life. Your stress level will go down. You'll start smiling. Come on, say amen. Your hair will come back. Come on, say amen. From such, it's about to go down. Oh, friends of mine, I'm about to close here. Because in light of the political chaos, the cosmic chaos, the religious chaos, and interpersonal chaos, in our world, the question is posed on tonight. What is about to take place? What is about to go down? And I'm glad on tonight that the Bible gives you and I a pointed, clear answer on tonight. Jesus said in Luke chapter 21, verse 28, he said, Now, when these things, political chaos, cosmic chaos, religious chaos, interpersonal chaos, when these things begin to happen, the Bible lets us know don't look down. I wish I had some help in here. Don't look down at your sorrows. Don't look down at your hurt. Don't look down at your grief. But the Bible says, look up. I wish I had some help in here. Is there somebody tonight that says, preacher, I'm not going to look down, but I'm going to look up because my redemption, my salvation, my deliverance, it draws now. Is there anybody that's thankful that your salvation is coming, that your deliverance is coming? Is there anybody that says, I'm going to look up and lift up my hand for my redemption draws now. In Luke 21, verses 26 and 27, it says, Men's hearts failing them from fear. I'm scared right now because I don't want Donald Trump to get back in the White House. Other people are scared right now because they don't want another round of Donald Trump. Ah, but the Bible says, Men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things that are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken but I like this adverb Jesus said then is there anybody that can shout 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 then, can shout then? the Bible says then 
we will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. I want to declare to you tonight, I know it's rough. I know it's tough. I know the hills are hard to climb. But, 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 it's about, it's about, it's about, it's about, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. Look what John says. That's about to go down. John says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, it says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even though who, those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. But then Jesus backed it up. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end. I am the one who is. I am the one who was and the one who is to come. The Almighty. I'm going to bring it to pass because I don't care what the devil does. I don't care what Putin does. I don't care what Biden does. I don't care what Trump does. It's about to go down. I want you to notice something here quickly concerning this text. Follow me here. I'm almost through here. There are five important facts about the coming of Jesus. First of all, because see, some people will not prophesy to you, they will prophesy lie. And some of our lives are full of prophesy lying. Your mama prophesied over you. Your sister prophesied over you. The bishop prophesied over you. The good reverend doctor prophesied. I wish I had some help up in here right now. You done went to a psychic and the psychic prophesied. Oh, don't believe a prophesy. I want you to know something about the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord are five important facts. It's literal. It's not figurative. Come on, say amen. It's personal. I like this friends of mine, but it also is visible. Ah, see, friends of mine, if, if your great prime minister was to beckon you, he would not come himself, but he would send an orderly to get you. I wish I had some help in here. And that orderly would take you to where the prime minister is at. But what this text is letting me know, that Jesus, the king of kings, and Jesus, the Lord of lords, he's not going to send an orderly. He's not going to send Gabriel. He's not going to send a seraphim. He's not going to send a cherubim. But Jesus is going to come in all power and glory. It's going to be a personal coming. But not only will it be personal and visible, it's going to be audible. You're going to hear it. No matter if you're in Jamaica, no matter if you're in Haiti, no matter if you're in Freeport, no matter if you're in Africa, you're going to hear it. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16, it said for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God will sound and the dead I said the dead I said the dead I said your grandmother I said your pastor the dead in Christ will rise first it's about to go down I want you to know something. Can you give me a couple of more minutes? April the 8th, on this past Monday, in North America, it was forecast that we were going to witness an eclipse. I wish I had some help in here. So people went out and they got specialized glasses so they can look up at the eclipse. But I've learned that the eclipse started in Mexico. Then it trickled all up to Texas. Then it trickled up to Colorado. Then it trickled all over to Georgia. 
but everybody did not see it at the same time but they were still looking up but as I, I thought about that beloved there's going to be something that's better than an eclipse I wish I had some help in here and the Bible says that we won't need specialized glasses I wish I had some help in here the Bible says we're going to look up Isaiah 25 and say Lord this is our God we have waited for him and he has come to save us and he's going to say into thou into the joy of the Lord because it's about to go down look at your neighbor and say it's about to go down so Jesus says since my coming my soon return is about to go down he gave his disciples some parting words in John 14, verses 1 to 3. He said, something, children, is about to go down. He said, I'm about to be crucified. Hug up for your hang-ups. Messed up for your mess-ups. Some of y'all are going to betray me and lie on me. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. The old song used to say, there's plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. There's plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Just choose your seat and sit down. The Bible says uh, there'll be many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, uh, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go, uh, I will. Can somebody shout out, he will. Uh, he will provide. Uh, he will heal. Uh, he will save. Uh, he will deliver. But if he will provide, uh, if he will heal, uh, if he will save, uh, he will come back. Uh, is there anybody here that can shout with me? I know I'm going through stuff, but it's about to go down. He said that where I am coming down here, you will be with me also. Saints of God, I don't know what you're dealing with tonight, but I want you to look the devil in the face. And say weeping may endure for a night. <laughs> but joy will come in the morning light. <laughs> it's about to go down. I want you to restate to him what Paul says in Romans 16 verse 20. Paul says, and soon the God of peace will crush the devil up underneath our feet. I wish I had some help in there. It's about to go down. I remember in closing. I remember in closing. I remember in closing, I was pastoring in this city known as Wilmington, North Carolina in the States several, several years ago. One night I wanted my dear sister a spaghetti dinner. I know y'all eat pigeon peas and rice that tastes good. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. I think I done gained some good glorious pounds while I'm here. Amen. Oh, but, but back in the States, if you want an easy meal, my dear sister, you've got to probably get you some spaghetti. So I went to this, this, this restaurant to get a carry out, a spaghetti dinner, and I told the brother what I wanted, doctor. And, 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 and so I thought they put it together. They, they took care of it, brought the package out to me. But I, I'm not like my wife. I don't look in the bag after they staple it up. Come on, say amen. We got any sisters like that? Come on, you look like a sister like that. Come on, say amen. <laughs> just playing with you, just playing with you. And so, and so, um, I got home, Elder, and I, I don't like to eat in my clothes. I like to get comfortable in some pajamas. Got situated in my pajamas, and I'm closing, just stay with me here. Sat down, grabbed my spaghetti dinner. I took my salad out, check. Took the spaghetti dinner out, check. Took my coconut cake out, check, check, check. I opened up the spaghetti dinner, pastor. I noticed the spaghetti 
I noticed the sauce, but there was one important item that was missing. My dear sister, it was my garlic knots. No, 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 no. I don't know about y'all, but I, I can't eat no spaghetti dinner without garlic knots. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. <laughs> so I said, they must got the wrong black joker. Come on, say amen. I, what I did, I, 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 I got up, I put my clothes back on. Got my receipt to indicate I paid for it. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. I got in my car and I drove that 15 to 20 minute drive back across the, the city. Got there in Pozzettas and I got to the desk and I said, my dear friend, I, I said, I appreciate your service, but there's one thing that you forgot in my spaghetti dinner. I said, you forgot my garlic knots. He started to look at me as suspect, so I pulled out my receipt as proof of purchase and payment. And I put it nicely on the desk. The brother said, I don't know why you came back looking for a $2.50 garlic knot. I would have left them garlic knots out. I don't know why you drove across town. I said, listen here. Don't give me commentary. I paid for it, and I'm coming back to get it. I wish I had some help in here. He went back to the back, and he got my garlic knots. I graciously took my garlic knots. I got in my little old car, and I drove back singing, singing, he will bring in the sheaves. I, I got back home, situated myself, dug my knife and my fork into my spaghetti dinner. Oh, but I thank God. God said, boy, I got to give you a revelation. He said, you went back across town. 15 to 20 minutes to get some $2.50 garlic knots, garlic knots that you could have got from the store. He said, but if you were that passionate about $2.50 worth of garlic knots, he said, what do you think about Jesus? I wish I had some help in him because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 16, it says we were bought with a price. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 that he gave his precious blood and my brothers and my sisters I want to let you know if I went back for some garlic knots Jesus because he paid for you he suffered for you he died for you he's coming back to get you it's about to go down the old song says face to face shall I behold him face to face what shall it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, that died for me? I don't know about you, but the old song says, lift up the trumpet, loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims. Be joyful and see it's about to go down. In closing, I've held you long enough. The Bible lets us know. Because somebody is asking. Jesus promised over 2,000 plus years ago to come back. But he's not here. Peter lets us know in 2 Peter 3 verse 9 that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness but catch what Peter says but the Lord is long suffer not willing that any underneath this tent that's trying to ignore him and downplay him tonight not willing that any should perish but that all will come to repentance because beloved brothers and sisters it's about to go down Let me tell you something, friends of mine. The comforting truth tonight is this. That you want to be on the right side when it goes down. Bring it down for me. I want, I want to make sure we hear this. Bring it down for me. Thank you so much. You want to be on the right side when it goes down. See, the only the right side Jesus and the wrong side, the devil. 
And see, the truth is this. When you die, that's it. You've already made a decision as it relates to which side you are on. I'm not trying to scare you into heaven. Let me tell you something here. What's comforting about Jesus coming for me is that I'm ready. What's comforting about Jesus being in my soul, and if I die tonight, I'm ready. I'm not in the river on the bank, in the river on the bank, in the river on the bank. I'm sure. And the question that I have for all of us tonight, which side are you on? Are you on the right side, Jesus' side? Or are you on the left side, the devil's side? Your churchianity can't dictate which side you're going to be on. You got to have a relationship with Jesus. Just because you're labeled as a Christian, do you have fruits, indications that you are? See, anybody can say that they are my wife's husband, but they ain't got no indication. I got the certificate. I got the receipts. Come on, say amen. Come on. Uh, let me tell you, any man can say that, but I got the receipts. Do you have the receipts that your soul is right with Jesus? Everyone standing on your feet. I've held you long enough. Because Jesus desires to spend eternity with you. The question is tonight, do you desire to spend eternity with him? He's already made it possible and available so that you can be on the right side and not the wrong side. So my friend, my appeal is simple tonight. There's somebody in here tonight, and I want you to listen specifically to this appeal. And I'm going to ask the musicians, let's take it down because I want to make sure we hear this appeal clearly. You're saying, Lord, I want to be on your right side when you come back and I want to make a decision tonight a practical decision to say tonight I'm going to be on your right side what I want you to do my friend you know where your life is at you know what the Lord has been talking to you about and you're saying preacher it's time for me to make that decision to get on his right side and not his wrong side. What I want you to do, God is talking to you. You're saying, Lord, I, I want to be on your right side. What I'm asking you to do, I'm asking you to leave your seat and I want you to stand right here on my right side as an indication to heaven and an embarrassment to hell that Jesus is your choice. You're saying, I want to be on God's right side. And I want to make that decision tonight. My friend, I want you to step out of your house. And I want you to come and stand right here by me if you can. Come on. You know where you are with Jesus. You know where you are with Jesus. God bless you, young man. I see you coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, we can do better than that, saints. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Stand right here if you're mine. There's another one that needs to join me and this brother on my right-hand side. There's another that needs to join us on the right-hand side. As an indication, I need to make that decision. Would you come and stand? God bless you, my brother. Come on, let's put our hands together. I'll meet you. I'll meet you, man. God bless you, man. You put a smile. Walk with me, man. Walk with me. Walk with me. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Stand right there beside my dear friend here. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. On my right hand side. As an indication, I'm standing for Jesus. No more with the devil. My soul is wrapped up in Jesus. Is there somebody else in the name of Jesus tonight? I'm standing on the right side. It will never.
Come on, my friend. Come on, I know the hour is late, but come on. This is what I came to Nassau to do. Come on. To the highest. I want you to pray, church. I want you to pray, church. There's somebody not too far from you that needs to get on the right side. Could you pray? Could you intercede? The blood, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. I'm waiting for you, my friend. I'm waiting for you coming down the aisle. Come on, come on. It reaches, it reaches, it reaches, it reaches. This appeal is still open on today. It's open tonight for somebody who hears the loving yet strong voice of our loving Savior that died for you. And you need to say yes. You've been saying, wait a minute, I'm not ready. You'll never be ready for this. As I said to you a couple of nights ago, and not trying to scare you, but to be real, none of us would be are ready for death. But it comes like a thief in the night. So if we're not ready for death, you will never be ready to make a decision. You just got to put your foot in front of you and walk. Let Jesus take care of straightening you out, changing you, cleaning you. You can't clean yourself, but he can. Somebody needs to come. I'm going to ask our dear union president, if he's still here, if he would come up as we prepare for prayer. I want to hold this appeal open because there's somebody else. You need to come up here and stand on my right side. As an indication, you're standing on the right side of God. God bless you. God bless you. 
God bless you. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. God bless you, young man. Let's put our hands together, please. I know we've been standing long, but this is what this is about. God bless you, young man. God bless you, young man. Stay right there for me, please. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? I'm calling you in the name of Jesus. Is Jesus talking to you tonight? Is he talking to you tonight? Is his nail printed hand extended to you tonight? You know where you are with him, but you got an opportunity to get it right. Will you say yes tonight? Will you say yes tonight? Well, preacher, you're holding it too long. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to hold it long because Jesus has been holding long for you. He did it for me. Come on. Come on. Come on. The blood Come on. can give you strength. Come on. From day, From day to day, today. it will never lose its power. It's yes, yes, yes. God bless you, Lord. God bless you, Lord. Excuse me. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to ask our dear president to pray for us at this time. Ahead, O oh God, our Father. What a powerful way you manifested your presence in this place tonight. What a word you sent. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. Thank you for the power of the word of God. The wonderful promises you have made. And in spite of the chaos in the world today. Oh Lord God, you are in control. We serve a great, big, wonderful, loving God. We thank you for the anointing on your servant. We thank you that you heard our prayer, brought your people to this tent tonight. And we thank you, Lord, for the promise of your coming. Jesus is coming again. We bow before you now in gratitude for how you have spoken to our hearts tonight. And we praise you and celebrate the triumph of the cross in the lives of these individuals who have responded to the call and are presenting themselves before you in full and complete surrender. Oh God, you know there are others here to come. There are others who have heard your call. I pray that you, O oh God, will accept your people who surrender to you tonight. Give strength and courage and power and might to those who are yet to take their stand. Draw, O oh God, your people to you. As your name is lifted up, and as the assurance of your promises come to our hearts, O oh Lord, draw men to you and seal, seal tonight their covenant with you, their commitment with you, so that when the waters are troubled, many will step in, and when Jesus comes, many, all of us, may be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with you. Oh God, we thank you for the promise of your word, the promise of your coming, and the assurance of your presence, the assurance of victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you all tonight for your blessed presence. We will see you by God's grace on Friday night. 
when the subject will be the safest neighborhood in Nassau, Bahamas. God bless you. That's our prayer. Have a blessed night. God bless you.